Hey everyone, it's Alan over at Cobblers Plus and today we've got a pair of Mirman boots for you. So we're going to be resoling them. So join us and check it out and let's see what the internal structure of these Mirmans are like here. It's a great shoe, especially for that price point. Let's dive in. So again, thank you for joining us. Uh, as you can tell, we're gonna be resoling these guys here. Now, I know a number of you are gonna be saying, well, why are you resoling them? They barely got any wear on them. Well, customer wanted to, and then when we look closer, he really wore out these toes here significantly. And so, I mean, they're, it's an interesting wear pattern. He wants uh, day-night soles put on these as well. And uh, yeah, we're gonna definitely get that taken care of. But it's a little bit of a different version that we're doing it than we typically typically do in our videos. A lot of times you'll see me doing these day night soles with a channeled stitch. And this is actually the first video that I'll be doing where we are doing a top stitch like they do from the factories. Channeled stitching is a little more difficult to cost a little extra and it's one of those that um, you know it helps extend the life expectancy of the uh, sole so you're not running into the stitches as quickly. But that's uh that's one of those that definitely comes in at an extra price doesn't matter how much these shoes would be worth say they're a thousand dollar pair of shoes or if they're you know two hundred dollar pair of shoes if you send it to the factory or if you get them brand new with a day night sole a vibram sole or whatever kind of rubber sole it may be they always do a top row stitch like this where it just sits on top of the rubber sole and that's what we're going to be doing today so it's going to be kind of like original factory so first things first Got to make sure we pull off this heel, or top lift, technically. Now, closer examination, I noticed a few very interesting details about these that um, Marcus was actually asking me. He's like, "What I, from a cobbler's standpoint, what do I think of the Meermans? They're a great shoe for the price point, but you got to keep in mind for the price point. That's what I'm telling you. You can't be trying to compare this to a $700 or $600 shoe or especially a $1,000 shoe. There are certain minor details that I guess you can say this is where they cut the corners on. And one of them that I noticed before taking off the top lift heel, um, a lot of times these holes here on the heel, they're designed for being held in, uh, for nails sorry can't talk but typically the nails that are used for those are gripper nails they're a little bit larger heftier they've got these little edges here to really grip into the material where Meerman actually uses kind of one of these nails here it's a little dinky a little small uh, in bulk quantities you do save when you buy these versus the harder metal ones that are larger and everything so that was the first thing that I noticed which was Kind of interesting that they would use that type of nail on there now obviously that doesn't make much difference just because the adhesive is going to hold it in place phenomenally but nonetheless i still noticed it he couldn't hide that from me before i even took off the the top lift on these guys so i got a bit of a mess on my table right now i've got materials and tools all over the place i'm doing a bunch of different things at once so let's go ahead and clip off these little nails now first glance i was assuming that these heel bases are a uh, fiberboard type material but now i'm starting to question it this is this is why i like to dive into it because i'll grab this one because looking at it from the inside here the way everything is finished out it really looks like it may be one of those fiberboard type um heel bases but now that i look at it closer once the top lift is off uh, it seems like it might be a different story, but we're going to find out. First thing that I'm going to have to do is get the adhesive to deactivate a little bit. Just a little bit so that I can actually pry off this heel base because if it is a leather heel base, leather heel bases are a little bit more of a pain in the butt to remove, in other words. so. Let's see. 
So far it is looking like it may be a leather all the way through. Uh, Marcus was showing me their website. They do have a lot of cool stuff for a great price. I'm still going to probably get me a pair regardless. But, whew, this rubber that they have is a little on the softer side, it seems like. So, it's wanting to stretch. So, I'm going to have to mess around with removing this heel base for a little bit. Uh, so, I'm not, you know, really messing too long on camera with uh, just the heel base, which is difficult enough as is, which is now proving to me that it's a leather heel base on these things. So at first glance, I was wrong. I was assuming that these uh, may have been a fiberboard. But what I think I might end up having to do is take off the layers since the layer is already deactivated. And just do it like this. Take it. Oof. Man, that thing slipped off on me. I think this, is not, this thing's not too sharp, this heel pry. But yeah, so I'm going to have to I'll show you real quick. I'm going to have to take one layer off after another. So we've got that top layer there, and then we've got the second layer, and then we've got the sole. And that sole is just very stretchy. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that first layer, and then I'll be able to more easily remove the second layer there. So I'll do it that way and uh, let you check it out once it's off. Sorry, I got interrupted there, but... Um, yeah, the problem with, uh, with this type of cork, basically, is the fact that, again, the goal of cork is supposed to be a filler for this cavity, because these are Goodyear welted, um, an insulator, but also it's supposed to have uh, support features. So basically, once you break in that cork in there, it's going to fit your foot almost like a custom footbed or orthotic. But, however, if the cork is shifting around like this inside so freely, it doesn't have any kind of consistency and does not become more customized to your foot and doesn't leave any kind of imprints because the cork is constantly shifting. Cork naturally still wants to expand and bounce back to what it is, but after a period of time, it kind of gives way and just kind of flattens out a little more in certain areas, giving you those perfect support features. But uh, in this case, you know, you can see this chunk right there is going to be really easy for me to get out. I could pretty much just use my fingers there to take a lot of it out. And you saw how much of it was loose. So that is kind of a downside to to this particular cork here. In other words, that, that it's just not going to do too well with that. But regardless, that's what it is there. Um, now, I did mention I was going to talk about the midsole. Now... Uh, all this stuff off of here now the midsole it is a leather on here i was assuming that i was going to be something a little bit you know different in other words they have a version of this artificial it's like a plot it's almost like paper in other words there are midsoles like that and from first glance that's what i th thought it might be but no these are leather um so that's that's definitely a good thing. Only thing I did notice is that in a few areas the leather was sanded out just a little bit too thin, like right here. Maybe if you can see that line, it's thin here. It's a little bit thicker there, so it's a little little uneven. That that was one thing I did kind of notice before taking apart the shoe or even getting started on it. Um, but hey, that's the way it is. So. Uh, as far as like the heel bases, like I said, I had to take them apart in pieces in other words like that It is a bit of a fleshier leather. You can see that it's very fleshy there So I'm gonna sand it up a little to clean off the old glue and glue them all back together in the meantime Let me go ahead and uh, start cleaning out the cork and removing these uh, gripper nails there So let's go ahead and take those out and uh, see you back in just a second All right, everyone. So I've got all the cork cleaned out here and uh, the nails pulled out uh, one thing these guys just popped out. So this is basically uh, a fiberboard piece here or No, this one isn't fiberboard. This is a leather. Sorry. Don't know why I keep wanting to say fi fiberboard on everything in this shoe When not all of its fiberboard This is a leather piece here that they use as a filler on the back end and then attached to it is a thin shank right here Now this is a little bit thin 
basically compared to average shanks but it is a steel one so it's gonna hold up very well it's got a special design to it where it doesn't snap as easily or anything like that shanks do snap eventually even if they're a thicker steel or something but this just sits in like that and then you just fill in the cork around it so yeah I mean, the, everything's intact with the shank here. We don't have to replace that. Just going to clean it up and uh, take off some of those cork chunks. This one has a little more some on it and get some of that rusting off of there a little bit. And uh, spray them down, clean them inside and out just a little bit to remove any kind of salts and minerals. And then time to pull the stitches. So let me go ahead and get that cleaning up to do and pull the stitches now i'm gonna have to pull these ones by hand because they have this tooling around the edges and it's kind of an aggressive tooling there it's not too fine so if i go to my stitch puller machine it's gonna chew up the welt on this shoe here so i'm gonna have to do it by hand in order to prevent any kind of damage to the welt so i'm gonna go ahead and get that taken care of and get some of that out of there there is one thing that always bugs me about these mirrormans um it's the welt right under the arch here it's like twisted always and i think this comes from some of the newer welt stitching machines out there um where it stitches the welt on but it it almost makes it seem like the welt is like pulled over around it a little bit and it drives me nuts from a cobbler standpoint i don't i don't know what it is but when it comes to stitching it's sometimes a horrible pain in the butt to do it wants to slide off because of that but yeah we'll still be able to manage it just frustrates me personally from again me being the person that works on it that i would have to deal with that it's a little annoying but regardless we're gonna go ahead and uh take off the or take out all the stitches clean this up get it all recorked and uh ready for some midsoles on there so I'm going to go ahead and take care of that and we'll see you back in just a minute. All right, everyone, so I just pulled out the midsole out of the oven. It's all hot and easy to move around and everything, so I'm gonna have to stick this on quickly, but we got the cork refilled. We got that shank and everything glued in underneath with that leather pad and uh, ready to stick. So in a second, I'll show you the stitches that we pulled, which was kind of an interesting one. Made us laugh a little bit here at the shop, but I'll show you in just a second. I gotta hammer this on though while it's still hot. I'm still gonna press this uh, on the welt press at least and everything. Let me go ahead and do that real quick off camera um, while it's so hot because it's a, something I gotta do quickly. And then I'll show you me cutting the midsole because it's one of it's a relaxing part for me for some reason cutting the midsole while it's still hot. And then I'll show you the stitches. So I'll be right back. All right. So as far as cutting the midsole, I like to use one of these hook blades. Some cobblers they'll use their what's called five in one machine. Well hand operated machine to cut it. Other cobblers like to use a different type of knife or variety of knives. It just comes to show that every cobbler has their own kind of preference for cutting things like this. I like the hook blade a little bit more. It's a razor, so it's a thin metal, easy to cut through a lot of stuff. And especially when the midsole is still nice and hot, cuts like butter. In this case though, it's not a hot knife going through stick of butter it's a hot midsole with a room temperature knife going through it sorry i got into up interrupted with a phone call but yep at this point uh we're done with the boot here so we're just gonna let this sit and cure and uh cool off and then tomorrow we'll be able to 
because it's already the end of the day here, but tomorrow we'll be able to continue on with them. But the thread, I want to show you real quick. This is the thread here. I know they're just like little stubs, but you can really tell there's white and there's brown in there. And so what they ended up doing is they used a white thread to stitch the sole on and then they just painted the tops of the thread. So I, it kind of made us laugh that the company did that. Um, I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I was just saving those pieces. I just threw them out. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's not even, it's not that great of a thing either. Um, just because... You know, they did the same thing here. You can see that the threads are lighting, uh, lightening up a little bit, and that's just that's ink on there. So, you know, that's not the uh, not the best thing, uh, depending on the type of ink that they use. So if you're somebody that tends to wear your shoes indoors and you have a lighter colored carpet, that ink can potentially come off onto the carpet. And the other thing, aesthetically, it's not as pleasing. You have to touch it up every now and then and kind of restore the color, at least on the top stitches that are on the top of the welt right here. So it just kind of made us laugh that they used a light color and then just uh, used a paint or a dye over top of it. But that's the way it is. Um, let me also show you the difference between the corks while I still have these before I toss them real quick. So. Remember how I mentioned uh, the large chunk cork pieces? Well, here's a comparison of the cork that we put in there. You can really see that these are much smaller chunks of cork. They're a little bit more dense, basically. And they're dense just because there's more of them. They're, there's a lot less space in between. And uh, that between these two, you can't really say that one's better than the other necessarily as far as because of the size of the cork both are good it's just that the larger ones are in most cases cheaper because they don't go through so much of a process grinding the dilemma with the large ones however is that if you don't use a good uh, binding agent to get everything to stick together like you saw that sole when it came off all the cork chunks were just all over the place they shift around they'll you know make a little spot that might be uncomfortable where a larger pile of it kind of bulges out and everything and you might feel that under your foot and the cork also won't form to your foot properly so that was uh, something I want to show you just the comparison between the cork that we used and what was on there originally um, I did use the soles already so I can toss them I did use them to trace out the uh, the day night sole that we're doing so I've got a trace outline there and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out so it fits as precise as possible because after all it is an aesthetics thing as well and a functionality thing the aesthetics for the logo to try to get as center as possible but also all these nubs here we don't want to end up stitching over them we want to be able to have those as center as possible some shoes obviously the day night sole may fit a little funky i had a pair of rm williams i already did a video if you want to check that one out but uh, these little nubs here it was a channel stitch sole we ended up having a channel through it just ever so slightly it's just the way that the shape of the shoe was overall and there was just no way of avoiding that particular one due to the size of the boot and the way that it was shaped now obviously this doesn't happen on all the rm williams it was just that particular boot because again the size you have to consider the fact that you know either it's too big of a size or too small of a size where it just barely barely fits in there in a certain position and uh that was the case with those ones but these ones they seem to be fairly well centered and they should be just fine on both of them so i'll go ahead and cut those out and let those ones cure and so tomorrow morning i'll come in and be able to stick these together let them cure till the end of the day and then be able to uh, cut it off so that i can get ready to stitch it and then let it cure the rest of the night and uh continue on so oh before i forget i gotta make sure i get the heel bases glued up so that those cure overnight as well i don't want to i don't want to leave these around but i'll be gluing these all back together at least and then that way i can work on them or use them tomorrow more effectively problem with the adhesive is 
it has a cure time of about roughly 15 minutes. We use a brand called Jet Set, um, and the cure time is 15 minutes before it's usable, and that's that's normal. Some glues may take about 30 minutes to an hour before you can actually start working with the material again, like sanding, trimming it, cutting it, or anything like that, um, without the uh, bond kind of coming apart too easily. It's recommended about 15 minutes on the brand that we use, which is phenomenal, but I still like to give it a good couple of hours and uh, really get it to cure nicely um, and if I really need it to cure especially with like a heavy sole that involves a lot of sanding and a lot of friction and heat that will be created I let those cure overnight usually about a 12 hour period is the ideal time to have final curing process where once it's stuck it's stuck on there good but these guys I definitely want to make sure they cure overnight so that I can continue on with them so i'm gonna get those taken care of and for you it'll be just a few seconds for me it'll be tomorrow so i'll see you later all right everyone so we've got the sole glued on here pretty basic stuff and uh lightly sanded up with a rougher sandpaper and then we roughed this up for the heel base but we're gonna go ahead and stitch it like i'd mentioned again this is the first video i'm doing with a non-channel day night sole so quite literally we're doing it like the factories with no channeling there and the stitch is just going to sit over top so it's not a very common request nowadays but some people still request it it's more original i'm not too crazy for it but whatever works and uh you guys gotta see it so let's start the stitch All right, so we got that stitched up. Now, obviously, we don't spray these ones uh, for a reason. Some of you have seen me spray the soles down before stitching. It makes us glide a little easier. Problem is, we don't want it to glide too much. Otherwise, we're skipping stitches, and the whole thing is just all over the place. But there's the uh, top stitch. So on our machine, we tune it up just enough where it actually tightens the stitch just a little bit more. So it leaves a little more of an indentation that the stitch will sit inside but give you that there so some of you may wonder also if you've seen my previous videos we do a closed channel stitching on a lot of leather soles where the knife will come down and cut a channel and we can do that on some rubber soles but day night and the viber meeting aren't one of those the type of rubber that they are it just stretches and twists just enough where it, it turns out a little wonky looking and we'd much rather not do that in other words so you know, if we're going to do a top stitch, we're going to do a top stitch. And if we're going to do a channel, we're going to pre-channel and then stitch it that way. So closed channel just does not want to cooperate ever on these day nights with the Viber meat and then certain other types of rubber soles too. But got this one taken care of as well as the other one. So we're ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and glue up the area here for the heel bases and we'll continue on. All right, everyone. So we've got heel base on top lift for the day night heel and we've got the nails in i don't think the camera's really gonna quite catch it and uh now we're just gonna i'm gonna show you the cutting knife that we have this is a lip knife helps clean up the inside area a fair bit it's kind of harder with this thicker material but Alright, this takes off the majority of it, 
And then we're going to move on to the sanders. I had to do this kind of off camera to make sure that it all sticks and cures quickly. Um, especially with the leather heel base onto the rubber day-night uh, sole. And then the rubber day-night heels. But at this point we're almost done. Just going to do the sanding. Finish them all out. And they're ready to go. All right, everyone, so I've got these all taken care of. I put an extra coat of wax. Probably need to let it dry just a little bit longer and then buff it all up. But that's a pair of Miramans for you, the inside construction overall and everything. Again, for the price point, not a bad boot at all, but uh, you know, not gonna be my first pick for sure. But otherwise, for the price point, definitely phenomenal. So we've got uh, day-night soles on here and heels. These are, of course, the uh, standard non-channeled style that the, that uh, most factories do. And it's not a bad wear. I'm testing out a pair of Allen Edmonds right now with that top stitch like that. But it uh, seems to be wearing out a little bit quicker than I would like it to. So I would definitely opt out for the channeled version if it's a good pair of shoes that I really like. Uh, the Mirrorman's, I mean that's completely up to you whether you want the upgrade or you want the standard because even even a $1,200 pair of boots if they're using a day night or something similar any kind of rubber soles they don't pre-channel it ever they just do a top stitch like that whether it's on the recraft service or brand new on a pair of boots that's very normal so this is kind of like a factory recraft in other words on these uh mirrormans came and talk but they're all done. I'm going to let them dry just a little while longer, do the final buffing, because after I just touched that wax, it's still a little bit soft. But we're all done there. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. If you like the video, make sure to give a thumbs up and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you next time.